two chapters today, and I'm going to royally screw up pronouncing a word that really, for the most part, I've only seen written, um, which is Verastier. Mm. Verastiacerum. You know, the truth potion. Um, and the parting of the ways. Interesting note here, uh, the parting of the ways as a chapter involves death of Barney Coach Jr., who in the movie was played by David Tennant, who also played the Tenth Doctor, whose last episode is also titled The Parting of the Ways. Because, you know, Britain only has like five actors. Pretty much anyone that's played anything in Harry Potter who's British is uh, they're shown up in, the, in Doctor Who in some manner. But that's not our focus today. Um, as you can see by the title, our focus is the shades of Voldemort that we're actually seeing here. And I don't mean like shades as in we saw the shades of his victims. Um, a couple chapters ago. This is the... <sighs> this is the proof that Voldemort and his ilk can actually be reflected through different sections of the population. That is to say, of course, that we get some really obvious connections and comparisons from Barty Jr. drawn by himself. Um, poor fathers, named after those fathers, killed those fathers. Which is interesting because Barty Jr is the pure blood variety versus Voldemort's half blood variety um, which Barty Jr. apparently knows about if he knows the full story of, of Voldemort's father and his father's death that's then being reflected all the way through and we get in many ways, a similar myth building from Barty Jr. than that we do from Voldemort. And not fully under the truth serum. Um, we actually get quite a that bit of that myth building from Barty bragging to Harry <laughs> while well, he's still in the form of Moody about hating Death Eaters that were never caught because um, obviously you weren't loyal to Voldemort if you weren't caught. <laughs> so like Voldemort we have this myth building but we also have this fundamental misunderstanding of how things work. Such as Hey, Barty Jr., you were real lucky to get sprung from Azkaban to be able to then help Voldemort. Not many other people would be that lucky, so maybe you don't get angry that not all his followers ended up in Azkaban. I'm just, I'm just saying. So we get the, the full story. We get all the pieces stuck back together. Barty Sr. seems to have some, again, shades of, of that mercilessness of Voldemort that we're seeing um, reflected through with his own actions against his son. We, of course, like I said, have Barty Jr. We have uh, I was going to say Voldemort. No, Voldemort's way over here. Um, we have Fudge. Fudge is the next big one. 
Um, in the power-hungry way is certainly here. He is definitely a politician that wants to remain in power. But we are also starting to get um, to the other end of the, the Voldemort shade spectrum, which is the fear. Because like I said, like we have this misunderstanding of the world, but what that really is rooted in then is, is a fear of things. And this, this power-hungry thing is sort of sitting in the middle, um, because it's the interest and the power to control the world and not have to fear things. Uh, but you'll notice for the most part that that's actually not a balance you can maintain. It is to note that a tyrant is likely, of all the different types of leaders, the one to live in fear. Because a tyrant is relying on the fear of the people and acts towards the people to create that fear. Which usually means eventually the people are going to rise up and kill the tyrant. And the tyrant is by himself. It's not like um, really an aristocracy or an oligarchy going on where there are other people. Like, it's literally the tyrant. So he's going to live in fear. And we're actually seeing that through all of these people. Fudge, most obviously, because he's moving towards this misunderstanding of the world because of this fear of what Voldemort could be. He's utterly denying everything, even when presented proof of Snape's, uh, Snape's dark mark on his arm. Like, very directly, he's denying everything to the point where he actually calls Dumbledore mad, and you'll notice that everyone just stops in that moment. Which is interesting because no one really stops when he calls Harry mad. Or starts to. Harry steps in and says, you've been reading Rita Skeeter. And that's sort of like, oh, everyone's understanding that he thinks Harry's mad, but the moment there's that ac accusation leveled against Dumbledore, everything goes quiet. And Dumbledore's like, okay, yeah, no, you're, you're not going to do anything. And that's where we're seeing this shade of Voldemort come through. Because Fudge is sort of a weaker politician version of Voldemort in fear of everything around him, but trying to maintain this myth to consolidate his own power. And we're actually going to see in the next book that that is going to cause far more trouble in the next book, in this next year of schooling, than Voldemort does. And I think Voldemort's very smart to use that. He can see how his own personality is being reflected through all these people. It's likely how he got Barty Jr. to obey him so explicitly. Like, you just point out how similar you are. And I'm willing to do many things so that we can have a great life. Are you willing to do those things too? It, it's, it's that cult indoctrination that we're seeing going through. So we've got, we've got Fudge, very obviously, um, and then we have, sort of on the lesser end, there is some concern about Snape. It is actually in this moment that I'm more impressed with him than much of the series, um, because right away he actually backs Dumbledore on this one. For most of the series, while I think he will definitely help Dumbledore, I really find that Snape is loyal to himself. It's not a question of Voldemort or Dumbledore, it's him. And then I think he edges towards helping Dumbledore, and I think this is one of those moments where he honestly does, because he just admitted in front of three students that he dislikes the most um, to this dark mark on his arm. And I mean, doesn't even hesitate. He's like right up in Fudge's face. So Snape is, is sort of our 
he's our wild card right now and is going to continue being our wild card, which is interesting because we know where our other two brothers of the three brothers stand. Uh, it's then a question of where Snape is, is standing. And then of course we have Kakaroth, who's mentioned a couple of times um, in both chapters, mentioned by Harry and Barty Jr., and then mentioned by Snape in this moment of talking about the dark mark, uh, who's definitely on the fear end of everything, but you have to remember that he is still within this this lineup of representations of Voldemort that we're actually getting. And the interesting thing is to remember is that two of these people, notably Crouch Senior and Fudge, are not in fact Death Eaters, um, but are still falling in line with with the evils of Voldemort. So that is to say that you can claim you're on one side or the other, but if you're showing the same symptoms, I don't think it's about sides here. I think it's about acts of mercy, compassion, and ruthlessness, and, um, and courage or cowardness here, uh, because we've got the ruthlessness in Crouch, and we've got the cowardness in Fudge along with the power, complete cowardness in Kakaroff, um, misunderstanding of the world, and yeah, literally if we just sort of take all of these characters and smoosh them together into a big ball, poof, we've got Voldemort. But we also have to remember that for just as many people that we have sort of reflecting Voldemort at us, we have just as many people reflecting back some sort of response to it. I won't necessarily say reflecting back Dumbledore, um, but if we're drawing a complete line, then the temptation is to either put Dumbledore in Voldemort's opposite position, or Harry. Uh, Harry sees, Voldem uh, sees Voldemort's fear of Dumbledore a couple of times in this set, so we do have that comparison being made. Like when Dumbledore comes in on uh, Barty Jr., like, Pff! like Harry's just like, yeah, no, I can understand it. Understand it, but not actually fear him himself, which is very interesting. So we have Dumbledore who's stepping up here. We, of course, have Harry who's stepping up here. We have um, the Weasleys. So we've got Molly and Bill. Um, Ron, I'm going to put again with, with Hermione here and again connect them to Harry because while Harry is is our sort of central brother um, it is the golden trio for the most part that is going to be facing things down it's really only at the end that we're going to have this one-on-one um, -on -one play in that we need to focus on so we've got the golden trio we've also got Winky which I wasn't necessarily expecting. Um, but if you actually pay attention to the story that is being told by Barty Jr., Winky is the one with mercy and compassion. She's the one looking at it going, this is not what his mother was asking you for. Give him a chance. Let him breathe a bit. Because Winky understands more than either of the crouches that to treat somebody as only a criminal, again, to hold them to only their mistakes, then that is going to prove to them that you're bad, and it's going to prove to you that they're bad, and you're never going to have a, a proper conversation. It's always going to be, uh, this is my enemy. And you're more likely to have that person step up into that position and say, fine, you only see me as an enemy, fine, I am your enemy. Which is what exactly happens to both senior and junior. And it's Winky who's looking at it going, my god. Like, are you serious right now? Guys, this isn't how this can happen. And, I mean, even when Barty Jr. got Winky dismissed, she still 
jumping to his defense about you've killed Master Sun. Like, she is actually a very compassionate elf that we're seeing, even in points that are really dark for her. And it's going to be a question of then, like Harry, how do you respond to this? How do you see the worst in humanity? How do you see the death of someone that you knew and cared for and, and come out the other side? And I think, again, we can take lessons from Winky here. Compassion is worth it, but you can't let it die the moment your compassion is rejected. Because the way humanity is, that's going to happen a lot. You're going to be the bigger person if you can continue loving people, even when they prove to be deeply, deeply flawed. But it's also a question of learning when to let go. Which you'll notice is, is the first thing that Dumbledore has to teach Harry in, in this set of chapters. Is, is let go of Cedric. Just let go. Okay, so, um, I mean, frighteningly, we have some people who are not Voldemort who are, are coming in very close to, to what he is and what he can become. But I also, like I said, we, we've got the hope that these characters are willing to stand up and, um, and face this down, which is where we actually get the parting of the ways from Dumbledore and Fudge. Is, is Dumbledore saying, okay, we have a war to fight, and, and I will fight it. One more chapter of this book to go. Um, and then we're on to, like, the largest, which again, like I said, surprisingly very little of Voldemort in it. Okay, I'm going to keep reading, and I hope you do too. See you next time.